Recorded live from Studio 12A in sunny Phoenix, Arizona. You're listening to the Josh and Friends Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the Josh and Friends Podcast. I am your host. My name is Josh. And this week, we are here today to discuss some recent events going on in the news, including some NFL topics and the safety of the league moving forward. We also give our thoughts on Rolling Stone's latest list of the 200 greatest singers of all time, as well as some very famous ongoing movie debates. So let's just get right into this. Joining me in today's program are two very familiar faces, my brother Andy and the ever so charming Mr. Ethan McDonald. All right. Woo-hoo! Yes. Yes, we got Ethan on camera. Yeah. How you doing, yeah. buddy? Doing great. Where are you Next joining week. us from? The, the uh, canyon somewhere? Where is it? <laughs> from parts unknown. I'll keep it there. There's many <laughs> people looking for me. I don't want them to find me. Hey, I, I'm not saying nothing. Your uh, secret safe with me. But him, I can't. I can't promise anything. <laughs> Andy, All right, I'll find you. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to the show. We have uh, Andy Matlock. Woo! Brother Andy, who's, yeah. He's yeah. Uh, drinking, what are you drinking, buddy? What uh, kind of beer? Drinking a hazy little thing. Yeah. Hazy little thing IPA. Good stuff, good Nevada. stuff. Ethan, will you, you, have a, you have a little bottle of drink uh, there? Uh, Saturday, it's nothing exciting. It's agua. Well, I <laughs> it's got, a big water uh, bottle of agua. I got my Hawks. Uh, nice over here yep so uh ethan did you have a good new year buddy yeah it was a great great holiday break very nice special just spending time with Riker because he's back from college it's that weird thing when my son's off to or you know oregon state and doing school so you go from seeing him every day to not seeing him but to be honest when he's home we don't see him because he just goes and hangs out with his high school friends and does all that which i totally understand you want to say it with mom and dad (laughs) that's that's how that's how it was right yeah totally and you're just like hey mom and dad and they're like just out the door does he go on long drives like uh like ethan and yeah yeah he does that he is i think he and he loves sharing music through his card to josh he's like it's mini me except he looks like sarah i mean but it's like his personality and i we drive we like very similar interests and all sorts of weird stuff so it's it's been great having him home he actually goes home tomorrow so i goes back to school tomorrow so we're we were just enjoying it. And we were lucky. We got some really crappy weather, like ice storms and stuff. I know like Andy, that whole Seattle area got pounded with that. And it was, so oh, it kind of made it nice. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of nice in the weird way that you couldn't go anywhere. So he was stuck right. with us for a few yeah. days. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Now, Ethan, when's the last time you ever, like, when's the last time you had to move somewhere? I mean, you've lived at where you are now for quite some time now, right? Quite some time. But being a teacher, um, we have a lot of new teachers coming in. I help move people all the time plus i'm large so of course Uh one of the only things i'm good at is lifting heavy things so people go hey can you help me move so sadly do you have a truck truck? i don't have a truck which (laughs) saves me part of the time but unfortunately two or three of my closest buds in town all have trucks and then they just say well get rich or get you want to get these in let's get in the truck and let's like okay yeah, yeah. At least you don't physically have the truck. Yeah, right, right. No, right. Make the worst. <laughs> yeah, because then you're on the short list for <laughs> every single person there is that needs to move. I think that's probably why we bought a Prius was just to yeah. say like you can't ask us. <laughs> Sorry, I got a Prius. <laughs> I'm driving a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah, there's definitely a reason I brought up moving. Yeah. Because uh, Andy and I had the pleasure of helping Jen move last night. Yeah. So yeah. Andy. How did you feel about moving last night, buddy? Uh, you, you it was like it was all right. After after it's all done, it's easy to yeah. it's easy to say. Yeah, yeah Andy was, was uh, Andy actually started out really positive. He was like, I get there, and he's like, Yeah, let's uh, let's let's do this, man. Let's go, let's go. And I'm like, Yeah, like Andy's all like pumped up. And then like, you know, how many trips into? Because it was supposed to be like, a, she's like, I think we could pound this out in a couple trips, like yeah. a few trips, right? Because yeah. like the original not time, as so prepared. Either, Sorry. Well. N- she was pretty prepared, but yeah, no, she, she had everything boxed up and, and oh. it, was, it was pretty much ready to go, but it was, it was the amount. It was she just, had a lot of stuff. I think just, she underestimated how yeah, much stuff. Yeah. Well, I, I went into it thinking it was just going to be a few trips and, and it was, it was, a, it was like maybe. All right. <laughs> trips. Yes. Question number one, how much total time from when you showed up to when it was completed oh. did this take out of curiosity? You had okay, a ball well, it's split up. So it's split up. So. Okay. He, he went out there. What time did you go out there? I got out there. I think I left around two or maybe, you know, around that, around that. I got out there two 30 or something. Okay. 
Yeah. And then, so he was out there kind of like helping. He's like, I'll get a head start on this. Like we can just pound this out and get this done. Moving the little boxes that me and her could move and then wait till uh, Josh and Eric would show up later for the the muscle to move yeah. the bigger items. Well, it yeah. was not even supposed to be that we were supposed to, we were going to, we were, we were planning to move today. Yeah. Right. Know? So, so what happened was we, Andy gets out there and, and I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll just join you. I'll come out like after I'm done. And then head out there and he's like how many trips did you have you're like I, we've already had like three trips it, like, like full four, trips yeah three or four or something like that and yeah. then yeah and then we get out there and i was like all right let's do this because now we have two trucks and then and then eric he joined later and he's like i have, have another, another truck, truck. <laughs> so we there were uh, i don't know how many trips we took <laughs> but uh so no yeah. moving truck involved you guys were just no doing truck. straight so, pickup trucks no, oh god here we go here we go here we go <laughs> So probably should have got yeah. one. Yeah, probably should have got one. No, so that's so mistake Jen, number one, boys. What did what did Jen keep saying? She kept saying like she's like last time uh, I had two girls help move, so it shouldn't be that bad. We're like, and Andy kept going, "Oh, really? Where are these two girls? Where are they? Where are these two girls? Where are these Get two the rats back right now, because I'm done." Yeah. yeah, I'm like, I'm like, oh, where's China and Nicole Bass? Where are these yeah. bo- bodybuilding monsters of girls? Like, Bullshit. <clears throat> Excuse me. She would, she would say it while we're carrying like the heaviest thing down the stairs. We're like, can you not say this the entire time while we're like emasculating your volunteer help? <laughs> so well, yeah, that's my next question. Andy, did you know this was going to happen when you were down here or were you voluntold? I, I did know that we were going to be moving to stuff. But then again, I thought it was just going to be maybe a trip or two, you know? And did you think at any point you might be moving Jen in with Josh or vice versa? Right. No. <laughs> I mean, basically. No. Oh. All right. I keep giving Josh a hard time about this. I can't help it. I, I, someday. Who knows? You know? Maybe. Uh, oh, you guys but, are funny. But, maybe that's what makes uh, the relationship work is that they don't live together. That's probably. Yeah, that, that that, actually, Jen says that, that, that all the time. Yeah. Jen says that all the time. <laughs> yeah. No. So we. The, the, when did we get back like midnight or i think oh my God. well we did take a break and went to cheeseburgers and beer uh, uh cold cold beer and yeah. cheeseburgers yeah which was a cool cool bar uh, that's cheese. the name of the place yeah i know right yeah. like, like you're driving, awesome. you're driving by and you're like yep yeah. and he would always drive by <laughs> and he would always drive by like, when he was visiting what is that he'd go oh my god cold beer and cheeseburgers <laughs> it's exactly what you think they got a ton they, it's just like really good bar food ton of beers on tap well, that could just be basically like the best name i've heard for heaven right i do it's I mean, awesome. I could, it was yeah. good. <laughs> and, and, but we only we just kind of ate we we ordered ordered we all had a beer ate our food left so well, couldn't well, really enjoy. So, so eric got there right when because we didn't know he was coming over we we're like you coming over and he's like yeah and we're like Wait, does he know we're moving? Does he know that we came over to Jen's early and like we're we're actually moving? Yeah. So so like I go, here's the address, and he goes, oh, and then he's like, that's over an hour away from me. <laughs> so he's like, he's like, I guess I'll come over. So he came over, and then right when he got there, it's like we're like going to eat, and he goes, oh, that's good timing. So he yeah. like went to eat, <laughs> and then and then we we're like, well, if he's already out here screw tomorrow let's just get this done yeah ah. you know what i mean so like let's just screw this because it's 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 literally it was like 56 minutes away so i was Jeez like all right, Louise. All right, screw this like we're not coming back we're <laughs> we're not coming back and andy was how do i put this um so long. Not in a good mood. Yeah. <laughs> angry? Was he angry? He I was, was. I was starting was. to get hangry. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't want to see it, well, I know you don't want to see Ethan hangry. Yeah. Ethan, I get it. Kill people. Mean. Plum, yeah. mad, plum mad dog mean if I don't eat. So I totally get it. And I get like that low glycemic something or whatever. I just start like, my mom That's used to great. even say to me, go eat something. You're an asshole. Yeah. Like, yes, mom. Yeah. I was having fun because I, I finally, you know, because it was Andy and I just moving everything. But like yeah. after a certain point, Andy's like, let's go. Let's hurry up. Let's go. So like, so then Eric's like, I got it. I got it. And like, Andy's like, and he's like at that point where he's like, he's moving stuff as I'm like trying to like get stuff out of the chart. And I'm like, oh my God. So let's go. So then like Andy, Andy and Eric are like carrying like the, the, like the bed upstairs or whatever. And then it's like kind of like that, that scene from like friends is like, pivot, you know, pivot. Pivot. <laughs> pivot. Oh god. oh god. Well, here's the other thing too. Jen's making fun of you guys all the time. Like, what a dumb move. And I love Jen. What a dumb move if you like your stuff. 
because <laughs> as this becomes the tenth, eighth trip, whatever trip, and you're angry, you're just gonna start throwing shit in the truck or like, oh yeah, hope you like your stuff. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was like that was also like the uh, the walls. And he's like, and he was like, I've never seen so many people like so upset about walls. Yeah, well, it was they were getting scuffed up, but they are flat paint walls, so it's oh, like you just look at them wrong, and they're gonna they're gonna yeah. do you know it's just. It, whatever it, it'll, touch up. <laughs> it'll touch up yeah so so that was a fun experience uh but you know she's all moved in now so it's oh, fantastic thank god yeah well done, so, boys. yeah well done. now ethan you're still coaching right how many how many years have you been coaching now oh, <laughs> i'm gonna take off my socks and shoes and i don't let's say ballpark estimates 27 years of coaching Wow. Oh, because think you, about you. I started coached, right after high school. Because yeah, coach you coached me. Yeah. Now, did your did your team go undefeated last year? Or, uh, last no. Season? Pretty oh. close. Uh, in middle school football, we lost one game. And it was only because our stud quarterback was out with the flu. But it's oh, amazing wow. what one good athlete does for you. So yeah, wow. <laughs> our stud quarterback <laughs> was a stud for middle school. He was a stud like where we would snap the ball over our quarterback's head. This is our best play all year. Snap it over his head when he run backs and one hands it because he's such an athlete off the ground and then just outruns everyone to the corner and goes 78 yards Dang. for a touchdown multiple times in a season. That was, that was the trick play. <laughs> yeah. It was just like, my God, we're pathetic in our execution. But thank God that kid's back there. Wow. But he was That's like a man, man with boys. Yeah. Have you, so is he, he's kind of like a Jason Torgerson kind of, kind of deal there or what? But yeah, he's probably a little bit more. Imagine if Johnny Hess was six foot two in seventh grade and could run like the wind, but that kind of like balance and athleticism too. Wow. Kyle, this kid, Kyle Stasek, we have is just a stud. He's going to be a crazy. Great football player. That's awesome. but yeah. Now I just started girls, middle school basketball. Uh, so we just finished the boys season. Cause remember you know, middle school, who cares? Junior high is like four sports season. So uh, the, there's no rest for the wicked. Oh. Or they have girls crying on the third day of practice. Oh my awesome. god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, yeah. I don't want to deal with this. I, I, it wasn't even me. I didn't say anything. It was just like their emotions run right at the surface. I now, said, "Are you okay?" Speaking of sports and crying, uh, the big oh. uh, news stories news story a couple of weeks ago was the uh, the Hamlin, the Demar Hamlin so collision crazy. and heart wow. attack. The 24-year-old Bill's safety collapsed on the field 10 days ago, suffering cardiac arrest. Hamlin was transferred from a hospital in Cincinnati to a Buffalo facility on Monday. Andy and I were like, we were, Andy's like, oh man, this is going to be such a great game. This is going to be, and it's the championship, like for, for fantasy football. So it, it, there's a lot of implications and, for this game, I right? Was, I was in a big final. I was in the finals in, in one of my leagues. It was an expensive league. And I was like, just. It was crazy too, because the. Andy even said to me, he goes, oh, my God, look at this, the crowd is just everything is electric. It's awesome. It's like a playoff game. And it really yeah. kind of was right. Yeah. We sit down. We're like, and, and boom. And it's like, holy moly, man. Like that guy. Yeah, he just that, you, were you watching that live. Were you watching that at all? I wasn't because we had basketball trout. So I, did, I heard oh. about it. And then we started seeing the segments coming up really quick. And then you guys may not know this because and I know it's weird that I actually watch a lot of soccer and like it now. I know I used to be the one that trashed it. Uh, but I don't know if you guys Definitely. saw that scene from a couple of years back on the uh, the Euros with that Christian Eriksen kid from Denmark just drops dead on the field. And literally if the paramedics are coming out and reviving him like on the field, and that was different because he didn't get hit. If right. that's a fact with what he, the, just, he just fell over, he, like he fell over and he, you could see his eyes rolled back in his head. I'm like, Oh my God, I think he's dead. Like Sarah's freaking out. Cause she's kind of just in yeah. passing watching the game with me. She's freaking out. He's dead. And then you see the paramedics and you see like both teams erupt into tears and they're just like taking a knee and praying and doing whatever they can. And then the wife came down of the player onto the field oh and she's God. losing her mind. Cause she yeah. basically jumped out of the stands. Like it was heart wrenching. I was just like, and you feel so powerless and you're like, am I watching someone die on like, you know, world broadcast? Cause this was like the Euros in yeah. soccer. So, so this really brought back kind of like a, you know, it wasn't real PTSD, but kind of similar to that. of just right. a feeling yeah. of powerlessness. Now the, the old Ethan would have said, why is everybody praying? Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Didn't he the old right. Ethan, this is an a-hole that I remember even talking about like Derek Thomas because I hated the Chiefs, like saying mean things like, oh, oh what, no. what a douche. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. No, but, but so what I want to talk about is like kind of, like, you know, Lee, everyone knows Lee, if you follow this show. A friend, friend of the show. Yeah. Lee has mentioned several times over the last year, you know, over the last years uh, that, you know, 
what's going to happen to football? Do you think anything's like going to be happening to football? Like as far as safety precautions or anything like that, or, you know, like, cause I, I was watching this. I pulled this clip of giants hall of famer, Harry Carson. You remember Harry Carson at all? I, I, don't I know Harry Carson. Does. Harry Carson, Harry Carson was a great player. And basically uh, here, let me play the clip. Do you think it's too dangerous? Because you said even as a Hall of Famer, you, you insisted your grandson shouldn't play football. Well, football is dangerous. I mean, you have to understand that even before you step on the field, there's a possibility that you're going to be carried off the field, whether it's a knee, ankle, shoulder, back, or whatever. But you don't go in there thinking that you're going to sustain brain trauma because with the hits that you give and receive, uh, that might work its way into CTE or some kind of concussion related symptoms down the road. I'm saying that the game is a violent game. Mm -hmm. And you know that you can get hurt physically, but nobody tells you that you could get hurt from a neurological standpoint. Your brain can be changed in ways that you find out down the road mm -hmm. what damage you may have done. When I first stepped on the football field, in the ninth grade, I sustained a concussion and I knew I shouldn't be there and I quit, okay? The next year I went back because I didn't like that, that taste of quitting in my gut. But what America saw on Monday night affects not necessarily the fathers of young kids who wanna play, it's the mothers who saw it and they don't want their kids to go into something like this, you know, they, you, you might hurt your ankle, might sprain your ankle or knee or whatever, but to get this, that's why I became like the um, tyrant of my family, because I knew certain things that were not being said. And I told my daughter, my, my grandson will not play football. He was two years old. And I know it may have been very difficult for her husband to accept. And I said, no, I am the tyrant of this family. I will be, I'm willing to be the tyrant. I don't want him playing you football. Think we need I don't want him playing contact good. sports. What do you think is gonna be the future of football as far as you know, the sport itself? I mean, it's so tough because I, I totally relate to what Harry Carson's saying. They're like, I felt the same way. If I could have gotten Riker to do anything besides football, I mean, I even said that, like as much as I love the sport and it was transformative for me, I um, mean, just the people I met and the opportunities it gave me and gave me a, you know, a vocation and everything, coaching and teaching. And I just didn't want Riker to get his head stoved in. I just didn't want him to be put in what that Sarah, situation. Did Sarah feel the same way? I mean, like she did to a degree. She totally understood where I was coming from, but she's also like, yeah, good luck telling your kid he can't do something because right. exactly. I tried that. What did it make Riker do? But just want to play football even more. And then he sees like all my memorabilia and how I'm a fan of the game and he becomes a fan of the game. And all. I mean, yeah. it was it was a hard it was a hard battle to fight. And he, he ended up loving it. We're lucky he got out of it um, relatively healthy. But I totally understand that. And when I see the comments like Lee made, I get what he's saying. Um, but there's too many people that that love the sport. There's too many good things, I think, that still come from the sport in terms of it is the ultimate team sport. I mean, there's nothing that teaches the kind of camaraderie and teamwork. And as we all know from playing guys, you can't have just one athlete out there um, that can dominate a game like they might in basketball or other things. Like there's just too much good that comes from it when it's done right. Is it going to evolve and change? And obviously the rules are changing all the time. Like we have targeting rules in middle school football. I mean, we've got all sorts of things like they're making us go through hours and hours of training about how we teach tackling kind of the old Pete Carroll hawk tackle shoulder tackle rugby style stuff trying to take the head out of the game so my hope is that we continue just to become better informed um, continue to get better helmet technology I mean by the end we might look like bobbleheads it might be ridiculous like bubble wrap wrapped around our heads but if that's what it takes to keep this yeah if that's what it takes to keep this amazing sport available because I mean it's just it's transformative still for young men I just you see the confidence the understanding that you can't do things on your own to, to be a part of something that's bigger than yourself. I mean, these are just irreplaceable lessons that um, I don't know that are as easy to get across in other sports, especially individual sports like wrestling or track, because it's just all you. But even on basketball, some of that, these kids, you know, I can shoot a three that career. They think they can just dominate a game of themselves. Right. Can't do that in football. Nope.
Yeah. So like, it, yeah, I didn't even know if I even mentioned what you, or what Lee said, but Lee was like, I think everything's going to be just, you know, video games. It's just going to be video games. Like, people, like, kids like just playing video games is like, that's going to be the future of football. And I'm like, that's a little drastic. That's think, a little yeah, drastic. That's far down the road. Yeah. Maybe, maybe some, uh, like a, uh, virtual reality type video game. Right. Thing. They but already have like video the, game way like, down the road. Like I mean, there's gonna have to be try a, those. They're boring in like 15 minutes. Happen. Yeah, like, and they're like cool for a second. Like oh wow, it's like the Wii. Remember when the Wii came out and was excited? Like, Look, you're up and you're swinging, and, and it was like a gimmick for a while. And people, yeah. like, no, I'm gonna sit back on my ass with my controller and just do this. You know, play the original games. But the, I just don't know that. Yeah, I just don't see football dying that way because it is still the most popular game I mean, in America. It's far and away the most popular sport in the, in the country. There's That's too much sure. money. It's like it's like getting rid of oil. You would have gotten rid of oil if there was a better fuel source. If pe- millions of people didn't have tons of their money and their livelihood wrapped up in it, there's no way these rich NFL owners or any of these people they still want gladiators. And I get what Lee's saying, and he's usually that guy that knows that stuff. I think right. he just likes saying things that piss people off. <laughs> and so I love you, Lee. I'm yeah, keep it up. But I disagree with you on this one, buddy. Too much money in that business. Yeah, and like Andy the said, companies, I, they're getting the schools to pay for the gear. It might be a little bit, you know, far down the road yeah. that we uh, we see that. But yeah, all right, let's move on to something a little bit uh, more light. This is kind of like the, uh, the 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 bulk of the podcast I wanted to focus on here. So, Rolling Stone magazine released their two hundred greatest singers Uh-oh. of all time. So this is going to be good stuff here. Oh, this no, is gonna, I'm, yeah. I'm already worried. <laughs> now, all right. So right off the bat, right off the bat, this list is not the most influential artists of all time. It's not the best songwriters of all time. It's not the best pop stars or, you know, the best front men or women. It's the greatest singers of all time. They're the ones that wrote this. They're, they wrote this. The greatest singers of all time. Okay. So I want to, I want to stress that. And by the way, I want to point out we're not dumb. Well, compared to some people, we're dumb, but like we're not <laughs> dumb in the fact that, you know, we, I, we know exactly what they're doing here. We're like, you know, there's always going to be some people they throw in that are like, you know, just ridiculous that should not be on the list. And, and that's done for, you know, stirring up controversy. So people will share the story and talk about them. I've heard more about like Lee. How many times have you, I've, I've heard more about Rolling Stone over this last like month than I've heard in the last couple of years. Yeah, because because how else is this list going to get talked about if there's not like Except, if they don't leave off key people I've seen, or have like a ridiculous number one or dude, whatever, you know, I've seen like 25 TikToks about people like breaking down this list. So wow. now it's our turn. <laughs> All right. So Ethan, I, now this list, it clearly has a ton of good singers so i'm gonna give you know obviously it's, okay. it has to right you have to have some good singers on here and i would say i think i had what did i have i had so there's a bunch of questionable artists so i i, I literally went through every one and there's some that i don't even know because they're like world artists you know and sure and stuff, like a lot of re- there's like reggae there's a bunch of reggae artists on here and stuff like that and i'm like all right but i actually i i had a list of remember there's 200 i took 40 40 okay. people that are questionable I was like, I don't know if they really belong in there. And I was really going back and forth on some of these. Like, all right, no, the, I love some of these artists. Go ahead, Ethan. Well, my question is like, just to clarify again. So you said when they explain this in the article, they're saying that they're not including record sales, their songwriting ability, just their pure talent to sing. Right. And that's going to, that's going to be key, right? So okay. that's, gonna be, that's okay. gonna be key. So just wanted to make sure so like Ethan, just as a, just as an example, I'm going to throw this out to both of you. So they had, so Ethan, right off the bat, I pulled, I had, I had eight people that I counted on here that were like punk, punk singers. All right. Listen, I love a lot of punk music. I do. Sure. I mean, punk, but what is the whole idea of the genre of punk? Come on. It's anti. It's Stop rebelling it. against the mainstream. Yeah. It's like, that's the whole reason punk like rose in like the mid late seventies. Like, I mean, Johnny Rotten. That, yes. Those pipes, man. Oh yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. John- <laughs> so if you can scream loud, you get to be on this. In that case, can I please put up like Max Cavalera of Sepultura for like the top? T- I'm joking. His voice is terrible, but it's metal. Come on. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So, so this list also had a, you know, like I mentioned, it had a bunch of reggae singers and, Reggae singers aren't like right, like they're they're not. There's some they some of them can sing, but like they're kind of like not great singers. That's, like yeah, it's not what you're thinking of when you 
when you hear singer. No. Well, in, and Ethan, I don't know. Listen, there's there's a bunch of people that, and I'm going to go over this too. There's a bunch of people on this list that I'm not even a fan of. Like, I'm not a fan of their music, but they're great singers. Like, they sure. should be on this list. And uh, so I'm just going to go over some of these here. So, Iggy Pop at number 176. Iggy Pop. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, he's got a weird voice. Once again, if you're talking about his impact, if you're talking about the absolutely, yeah. like, yeah. he's got he'd be way yeah. higher than that. But singing, okay. Here's someone. Here's someone that I really, I am a massive fan of. One of the greatest, probably no, he's the greatest songwriter in Canadian history. Oh, is Brian he? Adam? No, Neil Young. Neil Young is on. Oh. This list at number 133. Neil Young is not a good singer. That keeps me searching for a heart of gold. And I'm getting old. Okay, is Bob Dylan in the top five? He, oh, God. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm getting there. Uh, Patty Smith is on here. Oh, I know. I trouble's going to be gone. So it's gone. If we could change, change, change. Terrible singer. Uh, well, okay. What, 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 Josh, did they bring any kind of caveat of like uniqueness to their voice or anything like that? Or like, do they not? They just said greatest singers. So they later were forced <laughs> to make it. To statement. clarify. Okay. They were, they were forced because they're getting so much uh, pushback. But okay. so Willie Nelson, you know, like Willie Nelson's like, on the road again. Yeah. I just can't wait to And like, I love Willie Nelson. I love it. Like, how can you not like Willie? He's like, oh, smoking weed with like Snoop Dogg and stuff. Like, like, yeah, <laughs> Willie Nelson. Yeah. But like, okay, he's a great, like, he's a great songwriter. He like, he wrote Crazy by Patsy Cline, you know, and like, yeah. Oh. And had her sing that and it became another one hit. Crazy. Uh, Kurt Cobain, number 36, Ethan. Number 36. You hang me. To drown, but I can see you every night free. Is Kirk Cobain the greatest? The 36th, like the greatest singer? singer of all time. Singer. No, I mean, I love Kurt and I love his voice. That's, yeah. you know, we've talked yeah. about a thousand times how yep. the, the singers of the Seattle, the big four, there's a reason why they were the big four. Sure. Sure. Yep. But the 36th. Yeah. Okay, I've got to hear some of these other people that are. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so here's one that, so this is like one of the, I don't know what he's, what his nickname is, like, but he's like one of the kings of country, right? Uh, we're going way back. I mean, everybody knows the songs. I don't, you know, sit here and listen to these songs, like, you know, but I know the songs. Like, so Hank Williams, not Hank Williams Jr., Hank Williams, oh, wow. his dad, number 30. So we're talking about the, another nasally guy, like, hey, good looking, what you got cooking? How about, you know, like that kind of, like, there's a tear in my beer. Like, is that, is that like the greatest singer of all time? Like, really? Dear right. God, no. Okay, so what are we doing? All right, so here, here I had a, I had a list of the shockingly low-ranked singers on the list. Mm -hmm. So people that are behind Hank Williams at number. Okay, so again, not music piss that right I, I, I not music that I I picture Ethan like sitting around going like. Yeah, like you guys want to listen. You guys, I have this. I uh, bought this new record. Uh, it's the Carpenters. Yeah, man, you guys want to like uh, rock out to some car. No, okay, but you can recognize a Karen gosh, Carpenter. Down. Down. Karen down. Carpenter is insanely good at singing. Yes, like I, are we are, are we arguing here? No, no, we're not. Why do birds suddenly appear? She was at number twenty. Excuse me, one. 23. What? what? Hank Williams is 30 and she's 123? Karen Carpenter. I, I was like, 23? I was like, that's not bad. That's a good spot. And I was like, I mean, I'd still put her higher, but... Uh, another wow. shockingly low person on this list, uh, Brent Kipling might be upset about this one. Oh, uh -oh. Steve Perry. Steve Perry at number 82. Uh, look, say what you will about Journey. That dude was insane. Yeah. Like he had great yeah. powers, right? Yeah, one, um, like great one of the greatest rock singers of all time, right? Yeah. Steel lights, people. Oh. I just see Brent like just throwing shit right now. Dude. Oh, uh oh, no, uh, He's throwing uh, shit so, faithfully. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see what he did there. <laughs> uh, Ethan, here's one for you, buddy. Number okay. eighty. Number Bruce eighty. Bruce Dickinson of Iron Maiden. Run to 
<laughs> no. But this well, is, they robbed. He's been robbed then. <laughs> so this is this is criminal, Ethan. This is criminal. Yeah. Number 80 on the list. Chris Cornell. In my eyes, in this pose, in this guy's is no one. Oh my god. Hey, what's 80. Up? So yeah, Kirk Cobain's right. 36 and Chris Cornell's 80. Yeah. And this These is Rolling Stone stupid. magazine. Like, Rolling Stone, uh, shame on you. Like you think they would put him yes, like, really high. Exactly. Like, this Rolling Stone. Like, <laughs> it's not like it's uh, like, you know. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that, is, that just ruins all their other stuff. Because even if you were judging it off uniqueness or something like that, like the, the unique qualities of how they sang or approach the song, I mean, it's just like that makes zero sense. He's one of those rare. We've we've talked about this before in previous podcasts. Chris Cornell is one of those rare artists that got better as he got older. In my yeah. opinion, I think he got better. Oh yeah, because you know he was a howler and he was always a good singer. But man. When he got older and started doing all those acoustic, like, you know, just, just him and a guitar, I'm like, oh, my God, wow. He is yeah. crazy. I can't believe how good he is. Number 71, Roy Orbison. Look, he's like a favorite of all, like, the old guys. Like, the, all the old guys are like, damn, that guy had, like, crazy pipes, man. Can only in my dream. But they're like, eh. Fuck this guy. He's a fucking sucks. That's crazy. Uh, and then uh, one artist that I thought that was shockingly high on the list at number eight, the number eight greatest singer of all time, Beyonce. Now, Beyonce, good singer. She's a good singer. Little uh, over, over singer for me. Like, right. You know, I, I don't Christina Aguilera so, issue. Yeah, yeah. And, and do, I think I, I had this conversation with you, Andy. Eight. Do you know any guy that's like, fucking love Beyonce? I'm a huge fucking Beyonce fan. <laughs> I'm a fucking huge fan, dude. Maybe like, of that sweet. It's like Never fucking mind. like, it's like Alice in Chains and then fucking right right below like fucking beyonce is that andy andy says that andy says that i was is that what i'm hearing that's andy's yeah. ranking that was, yeah that was oh. i was yeah i was quoting andy yeah yeah oh, okay um so so uh, the top 10 can you guys guess any of the uh the top 10 who would, who would be on the top 10 Go read the them top, off brother top 10 i will not right, guess so, so al green fantastic the reverend okay. al green. since we've been together Ooh, loving you forever is what I need. Great singer. And by the way, they're all like African American artists. Like, uh, and whoa, they might might as well should be. Like, yeah. they're, they're yeah. obviously like raised in the church and the choir sure. and all that kind of stuff, right? Like, oh, like Whitney Houston. Yeah. Oh, yep. yeah. yeah. Exactly. Ooh. Whitney Whitney Houston. Was, dude, I still could see Whitney singing the soup, the, the national anthem at the Super Bowl. Like, yeah. that's such an iconic moment yeah. in my mind as a child. And like I, I was tearing up. We're in the like the Gulf War yeah. at the time, and I just like I was like, oh my lord! Like I never was prouder to be an American when she sang that national anthem. Well, like, explain like to people now, like yeah, how not, that that but, Super Bowl is like the most memorable Super Bowl still to this day for me. Yeah, like, yeah. like it wasn't just that song. And yeah, the Super, you know, it was the quality whole, of the game. Crazy. I mean, Ryan Dunham didn't like the Super Bowl, but no, Scott Dale. Norwood made him remember it forever. <laughs> <laughs> Pick that Dunham. <laughs> oh, lace is out. All right. Um, <laughs> then they had uh, Otis Redding at number oh, nine. Sitting on the dock of the bay, watching the tide roll away. Otis Redding. Yeah, Stevie Wonder. Got to have nice. Stevie on there. They can feel it all over. They can feel it all over, fever. Ray Charles. We got the two back-to-back -back, uh, blind guys there. She give me money. When I'm in need, yeah, she's a kind of friend indeed. I got a woman way over town. 
That's good to me. Uh, Definitely more of a Ray man than a Steve man. I like Ray's deepness Ryan? in his voice. Stevie's a little high for me. Rich, Rich Falls, he'd be like, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, we have Mariah Carey at number five. That was the one that, oh, we, that they put on there. Sing. She could break. She could break glasses. She, break glass. she can't. But I like the way I feel inside. Got me emotion. She can't hit. Okay, glass. it's Freddie Mercury on this list. Freddie Mercury is on the list, but he's not in the top ten. That's uh, a PS. Isn't that crazy? PS. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Billy Holiday at number four. We're like we're going way old school on that. Uh, really? You have, you have uh, Sam Cooke. At number three. Whitney at number two. Andy's Whitney Houston. So I'm saving all my love for you. And at number one, talk about pipes. Phil Collins. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Collins. No. Uh, <laughs> Aretha Franklin. Oh! You gotta do a Aretha right. Frank, Queen of Aretha. Soul. Give, her, give her a little respect. I feel like I had to say oh, he did right there. That was good, Eddie. I feel yeah. like I had to say Phil because he keeps death staring at me and he's turning into the Hulk. I'm like, oh god! So I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, damn it, Phil! I tried. I tried. All right, so Ethan, now we have uh, some artists on the list who, to me, are kind of like this is kind of like some of those debatable guys, right? Like the the talk singers, like, and you know what I mean by that? It's like he's like. I was like, the train up coming. Uh, like, it's like, it's not really singing, right? You're like, it's like, uh, you know, like, come on, baby, light my fire. <laughs> well, he sings sometimes, yeah, but yeah, he he's does, like, yeah. he's a talk singer too. <laughs> but like, you have like a, you know, like, I say, I say hey, babe, take a walk on the wet. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, and you know, it's, it's funny because like, yeah, Lou Reed at number 107. Totally. Uh, who's, who's, uh, by the way, Lou, Lou Reed is above Karen Carpenter. Karen Carpenter. I don't know. Okay, no, I know we keep talking no, about Karen no. Carpenter, but geez, like that's, it is. That's look, she's insane. She is. Like she's like, insane. Uh, you have Chuck Berry, who's again kind of like a talk. He's like a. I say go, go. He's known for the guitar. No. Right? Like he's like my dang Once a leg. Again. Yo, dang a leg. <laughs> they put the wrong Sorry. list. They yeah, put the I, wrong again, title to this list or something. Again, I don't, I'm not ripping on the artists. I love these no, artists, yeah, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Johnny Cash, number eighty-five. Uh, James Brown is also kind of like a get, get out of get out of you know it's like yeah. Yeah, it's like he's like great singer like I don't know like uh, and again this next one because I I really gotta like preface this I, I love these artists love them but just as a singer Ethan uh, this pains me but I I put. David Bowie on there, he's at number 32. He's not the number 32 greatest singer of all time. I mean, he's not. No. He's greatest songwriter? Pfft, absolutely. He's f amazing. But like, you know, it's like, ground control to major. To, it's, yeah. it's not really singing. Like, I don't know. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's I, like this list is just mixed up with like different. Well, how, how, how many contributors did they have to this list too? Did they ever back that up? Because clearly too many. That's a good question. <laughs> but um, Ethan, number 15. Number 15 on the list, Bob Dylan. Once upon a time, you dressed so fine, threw the bumps of dime in your prime. Then you... That's just ridiculous. Once again, it's like if you're ranking, Eight. once again, their impact on music and how they could create a whole new genre, there's, you know, whatever. That would make sense. It'd probably Greatest be low for Bob Dylan. Greatest but, yeah. songwriters. Singers? Yes. That is not singing. He's not That's like he somebody strangling a Muppet. Ethan, he's known <laughs> for he's known for his bad singing. Yeah. Great songwriting, bad singing. He should have been put solidly at two hundred, if anything. <laughs> Shouldn't even be on the top two hundred. Blowing in the wind. Okay. Uh, and then my favorite on the list, Ethan, my favorite of all of the names that were included on this list. And you're going to love this. Ooh, you're going to love okay. it. All right. All right. Sitting at number 30, number, I'm sorry, 130. I keep messing up there. Jeez. Sitting at number worse. 130. Let's mess with our emotions, Andy. I <laughs> Courtney Love. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm all I want to 
happy. I walk a star in demonology. Hey, so glad you could make it. Yeah, now you really made it. Hey, so glad you could make it now. Sorry. Again, there's some songs that <laughs> I like, I guess, but uh, kind of. That's a she's insane. Known, she's also known for. I'm like, I, I remember like these tapes would come out. And I'm like, oh god, they really clean her up in the studio because she is bad at singing. Like Ugh. she's bad. Listen to anything live. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Ethan, you know who made the list at 173? Who's that? Are you familiar with Marianne Faithful? No, I don't. I don't think so. Well, let me. Uh, let me refresh your memory. Yes. Is that the lady's thing on the Metallica song? <laughs> yes. Good God. So she said number 173. They're like, just fantastic. Well, memory remains, right? That's the name yeah, of the yeah. Metallica song. Oh, what? Isn't that awesome? No. That's not awesome. No. Is what is going Hetfield, on here? Is Hetfield on there? James Hetfield is not on the list, which brings me to my next point here, Ethan. My is there point. any metal? Any metal singers? So that's what I wanted voice. to. That's a, so I want you to name some metal guys. All right. Or some well, hard, hard rock metal. Name some, okay. name some guys. Because I wrote well, down I wrote down about 10 of them. Uh-huh. Well, here's one that you need to think about right now. So if you're doing off like just the, the – the uniqueness of their voice and what they brought to music. How is Ozzy Osbourne not on that list with some of the other Jack Wagons they put no, on? Ozzy Osbourne is actually, he's on the list. Okay, the what list. number? Okay. 188? Um, They're all going to be deep, I, Ethan. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be pretty deep. I, I have it on another spreadsheet, sure. so <laughs> I don't know, but uh, we can we can add okay, it. So at least Ozzy's included. included. Yeah. Uh, uh, how, about, how about Dio? Dio is actually on the list. There's, there's, oh. there's, a hand, there's like, there's a lot of discussion about how metal and hard rock were wildly ignored on this, which is a shame because just because the music is hard doesn't mean that they have they don't have great singers, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, sure. So, right. so you want me to tell you some of the uh, people that they did leave off the list? Well, it sounds like they left Bruce Dickinson, which is BS, even if he's not your cup of tea. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, oh what about God. one more? One more guess. All right. What about Surge Tankin of System of a Down? Because that boy's got some pipes. I know it's a little oh, Armenian. It's Swimming through the void, we hear the word. We lose ourselves, but we find it all. So it's ridiculous. That guy can sing. Are you kidding? Are you going to put him on the list? Well, well I'm just saying. It's, it's, be, it's, it's Rolling Stone. Cool yeah, on. right. <laughs> no, uh, I love what was guy. I thinking? Yeah, so, okay, the number one is... But Mariah Carey is top five, so never. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Mariah Carey is technically a, a good singer but uh sure okay rock guys who were excluded Ugh, this is disgusting all right so they had all of the seattle guys listed on there at some point except no lane staley lane staley That guy had some pipes, man. Um, Lane Staley, I prefer him over Eddie. Yeah, me too. Me too. Next to Chris, second to Chris. Yeah, Chris is Chris is pretty hard to beat as far as yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, what about Nancy Wilson? Nancy Wilson, I believe, was left off the list. You'd have me down, 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 down on my knees now, wouldn't you? BS. Can you fucking imagine? Like, Are you kidding me? That lady that has better, better pipes than, than Nancy Wilson in her. I'm sorry, uh, Ann Wilson. Uh, Ann sorry. Wilson. Yeah, Nancy's a guitarist. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, my yeah. bad. That's yeah. my bad. Is she right behind you? Yeah, I was going to say. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's ridiculous. Uh, I, if anybody wants to argue that, listen to the oh. song alone or any of those huge, any of the, any, any song, uh, Crazy on You, uh, you know. Yeah. Any of, Kuda? I mean, any yeah. one of them. Dang. Uh, uh, was Scott Weiland on this list? Scott oh. Weiland was not on the list, I don't think. Thank God. Yeah. I'm uh, not a big Scott Weiland guy. So yeah, I was just curious. <laughs> yeah, okay. So here's, I'll throw some out here. So um, Lou Graham of Foreigner. I've been He's a good. He's a good singer. Not yeah, on the is. list. Getty Lee. I don't know if uh, I can understand Getty Lee not being yeah, on the list. Yeah, but. me too. But I just threw it on there because he was excellent. Yeah. Um, Mike Patton. 
was not on there. No he, respect. At least just throwing shit across his room right Uh-oh. now. Um, <laughs> Did they leave off Joey Belladonna from Anthrax? Because you heard him sing that national anthem. I mean, come on, just joking. <laughs> was Roseanne Barr on the list? Uh, I mean, yeah. Fergie? Uh, I mean, Fergie's got a voice close to Jesus, right? So he got put Fergie oh, in. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Chester? Uh, Chester wasn't on the list? Oh, just that's that's a bummer. He's a great singer. He Lizzie Hale? Singer. You like Lizzie? Yeah, I do. Good, on the list. Just good singer. Uh, Bruce, as uh, Ethan mentioned, yeah. excluded. Amy Lee of uh, Evan. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's right. got a great oh. voice. That's not weird. Like, she's not on there. She's like, she's a pretty damn good singer. You know, the girl that sings pretty well, even though it's a little poppy, not my style, is that lead singer for Paramore? Oh, Hayden Paramore, Williams yeah. or whatever? She's got yeah. some pipes, man. Sure. Uh, Maynard. Maynard. Oh. Uh oh. Wow. And he's like, I'm about done with this beer. I'm about to throw it. Yeah. We didn't have Maynard on there? Yeah, no Maynard, Maynard. And here's some of the people that were excluded that other people were were mentioning on pretty much. I mean, there's literally articles written about these zones. Like, so they had, they had Jennifer Hudson of American Idol fame, and she didn't she get kicked off American Idol. Um, famous actress, though, now, too. Celine Dion. Listen, say what you will about Celine Dion. She's like literally one of the greatest singers as far as pipes go of all time. She was excluded. Judy Garland. That makes sense. Judy Garland. Like Judy Garland was not on the list, uh, but they had like all these like no name people on there. All right. Uh, Cher, Bruno Mars was excluded. Madonna. I don't. I wouldn't say Madonna's like one of the greatest singers, but she has a lot of hits. Uh, but yeah, but still, like compared to co- wait, 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 Courtney Love. Love. Courtney yeah, Love. For comparing it to some of the people that are on this. List. <laughs> yeah. Um, Annie Lennox, massive oh, man, pipe. massive pipe. He was a great singer. Uh, Nat King Cole, Nat King Cole is not on the list. <laughs> Dion Warwick, Pink, Ann Wilson, as we mentioned, and the one that stabbed me in the heart, Daryl Hall. What? He's like one of the greatest <laughs> like singers ever. So alone and so really matters to me. Take a look around. You're out of touch. Daryl Hall is like insane. Yeah. So due to the backlash, Ethan, here's what they wrote. So (laughs) Rolling Stone ends up releasing a statement regarding their selections. And it says, all right, everybody, (laughs) before you start scrolling and commenting, keep in mind that this is the greatest singers list, not the greatest voices list. And it says talent is impressive. Genius is transcendent sure many uh, of the people on here were born with massive pipes perfect pitch and boundless range others have a rougher stranger more delicate instruments you know what they should have put that all out with yes. the initial list exactly because instead of, instead well, of it, by the way by the way it still makes no sense yeah no, right? still not it's still it still doesn't justify some of the well, not with the list. It doesn't make sense. Because so. then, then you would still put like Bruce Dickinson and you would still put like some of these other other artists in there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Again, just before, you know, before any of you start commenting, I'm a massive David Bowie fan. So don't comment about <laughs> David Bowie because I love David Bowie. All right. Okay. Let's move on. So, Ethan, what are your Sir. thoughts on the new Pantera concert or Pantera reunion that happened late last year and say going on. in oh, I get it from a marketing standpoint, those guys, you know, like, but to me, it's just sad, like that they, sh- they get to call it the band when the two founding members, the two brothers, the, the heart and soul of what that band is, are the ones that are dead. And it's like, almost like, I don't know, it feels almost vampiric or something weird here that you're sucking money and lifeblood out of two guys that are gone. And I'm given, they might've given their blessing if they, you know, things were reversed or whatever, but, you know, and at least it's Zach Wild. I mean, the guy's a talented guitarist, but I mean, there was only one Dimebag Daryl, man. That guy was unreal. Um, and Vinnie Paul and just the way, he, I mean, it's just, it's just sad to me. It's like, I feel bad that if some people go and see that and think like, I saw Pantera, it's like, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. You just help put some money in Phil Ensemble's yeah. pocket. What do you think, Andy? I totally agree. I mean, it's. And we, by the way, we've all seen Pantera, right? Yeah. Like the real. Yep. Original yeah. Pantera. Yeah. I, I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing like it five times. Like, yeah. <laughs> five times. That's all right. One's better than than five or none. Than yeah, none. Right. Five. Not as good as five, but I mean, how dare you? <laughs> I, I I still, if I had a chance to go see, I, I they're playing with Metallica. That'd be that'd be kind of a cool 
show. I mean, that's the tour that they're doing right now or whatever. It would be cool to see because uh, I like Zach. I like uh, Zach Wild, uh, the guitar player, and I like. Uh, but I. <sighs> I think I you're right, know, though. I, I'm, okay. I'm torn. Like, so, it's like, yeah, it, I think you're right. You've seen him in a festival or seen them opening. That totally makes sense because yeah. that's not the real reason you're necessarily there is just for that. Yes. And then you kind of get to see, well, it's be interesting. You well, know, but even, as, yes. as you mentioned, I just think that it's today, in today's world of music, especially music, the brand is just too big to just be sitting in a puddle of mud. You know what sure. I mean? So, the the I mean the the name itself it's just like it the name itself can make millions and millions and millions of dollars and at least Zach was a like a good friend of those guys right yeah. like he and and he's like hey look man he's like if anybody was to do this it's me yeah right so it's like okay you got that right you have that and you do have what's the hardest thing to replace unless you're talking about um, van halen or something what's the hardest thing to replace is in a band singer. the singer so they have the singer and they have like his best friend on guitar it's, and it's, they hard, have the name. it's hard to replace so one of the coolest uh rock and, metal and, guitarists and of I all think, time but. i think i read that uh zach was actually talking to Vinny about like doing some sort of kind of like reunion kind of deal and they're like yeah, I mean, we could we could probably do it, you know, because like you know that was when he was still alive, of course. But yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's a tough one, man. Because now, Ethan, would you? So thinking about it, like in the new generation of things, with like your son, would you take your son to like you know what I mean? Like that'd be kind of. Would you do that? Like you take your son to like if you wanted to see that. I think like we we're saying, if it was to go see Metallica or some other artist or like a big festival show, yeah. and then that's one of the things we pencil in, I would. But would I take Riker just to go see that version of Pantera? I think we'd better off finding like some of their old DVD shows that I used to show you guys, like all the crazy demons. Yeah. Like see them in their prime, see yeah. Dimebag Live. And so like, you know, that, even if it's on a video, just to see the way he could share. Like I used to go to those concerts just to fight to the front row, just to set up shop in front of Dimebag Daryl, just to watch him play. Cause it was, it was mesmerizing. He was just such a talent. That's awesome, man. Yeah surge of uh of system of a down they were the the rest of the band was talking about how they should have kicked him out 15 years uh ago because he hasn't wanted to hasn't wanted a tour are you talking and, about the singer yeah oh, oh one yeah singers. well he's been a he's been a mess and so like, nobody you know the, like this whole band is losing out on all the money yeah. of, of of all the touring right and all, and all the exposure uh, and, and think, yeah and think about you know as much as i don't like phil and selmo yeah as much as i do the he's rest a of piece the band. of shit to those guys but like, like what what about yeah. those guys what about him and what about the drummer right or not not the, the yeah, bass right. player yeah uh, like right these guys have to you know try it's to live with it too it's a big paycheck. Yep. So, but that's the problem that sucks too is that you know, try to replace Serge. Good luck. There's just not many people who sing like that who have yeah. that talent. You know, it's like, I know. Whoa. So go start even another band. It probably is never going to have the success, you know, unless yeah. you go find some other big front man and super group it. But good luck with that. That doesn't right. always work out. Yeah. Crazy. But I just keep coming back to the, the, the brand is just too hard to, it's too hard to waste. Like uh, you, you see these bands that tour now and like they literally have like one guy and it's like different lead singer, different. Ah guitarist like yeah. they have like the drummer who might be there or the bassist or something like that and like i can't even justify it i don't i don't care if it is a small venue i i can't justify it like a cover band i can't do it yeah. right like That's i would rather see a good cover band or like you said pull out the dvd and watch like them in their prime it's awesome like the video is all there they have like great videos and hd like you know surround sound like stuff about all these bands and stuff like that so i get it yeah, yeah. um now, uh, moving on to uh, some little bit of, I, I pulled a little of a variety of stuff here. This one is movies. So we got some movie stuff here, Ethan, and I, I saw this list and it was the 12 most enduring movie debates oh. ever. I was like, except they missed like the biggest one in my opinion. Who shot first, Solo or Greedo? <laughs> That's on there. So, so yeah. So I thought I'd pull a couple of these and then we, uh, we give her uh, own kind of like uh, takes on these. I don't know how much input we're going to you know, have for this, but uh, so the first one they have on the list, the movie is star Wars from 1977. And the question is who shot first? Is it Han or is it Greedo? 
So uh, it, I, this is not really de- debatable because like the first movie, like the, Lu- Lucas, yeah, Lucas went back and he changed the like who shot first, right? So like they re. That's what I, Ethan. I have these. Remember, I I had these movies and I oh, yeah. and I found the original copy of Star Wars, which is a big collector's item now. Oh, I can and imagine because you know everybody, every Star Wars fan wants to see the original Star Wars as they were made. So that one's a kind of a dumb one. I I don't even like that debate. But here's the first one on the list. So the first one they had on the list was from 1997's Titanic. I think you know what that one is, right, Ethan? Yeah, I do. I hate that movie. I'm not saying, I'm not asking if you like it or not. No, I know the movie. So, So, and the question is, did Jack need to die? It's been 25 years since Titanic sailed into theaters, becoming the first movie ever to cross a billion dollars at the box office, tying the record for most Oscars ever won. But a quarter of a century later, we're all still wondering, Sorry, what the hell? That door could float with three people. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Could Jack have fit on the door with Rose? Now, Ethan, as a big fan of that movie, uh, I'm sure you have some input on this. Oh, yeah. You need to They're floating on that that door that's like, uh, you know, some debris and... And uh, she's she's on it. I was I remember yelling at the, the at the movie at the time. I was like, "What what is this? Like, get on the door! Yeah, get on!" And she's like, "Well, see you later, sucker!" And like pushes him off the. Let him know, go. <laughs> like romantically lets him <laughs> yeah, die. Right? He's like, like <laughs> she was secretly thinking, "I don't want this guy in my real life." I was just you know, like, it was just a boat bang. Right. Did, let him go. No, I don't recall <laughs> how that movie went. Did did the did her original husband? Did he fight his way onto one of those boats? Who was that? Or not husband? It was a. Billy Zane character, yeah. I think. Yeah. Did he? I mean, I could see him getting on one of those boats, right? I watched that movie once in frustration and anger because I still remember that that one best picture over Goodwill Hunting, an original story with like really good acting and not some CGI bullcrap about we already know what's going to happen. Guess right, what? Right. It's the Titanic. You know how the movie ends. <laughs> Stupid. It was just like, oh, so sorry. I just we, get enraged. But we, did, but did we know how the movie ends? Because uh, you know he falls. I mean, of course, this is a sure. part of the movie. <laughs> I think for the sake of the drama and the yeah the romantic kind of uh, tragedy, you had to have him die for the sake of storytelling, even if it's stupid and not that's what, very. That's what James Cameron said. He's like, look, it's, it's there's no debate because that's that has that's how it has to happen. They should have made whatever she was floating on smaller than. <laughs> yeah, because right. I mean, right. everybody's like, yeah, it looked like there was some room. Yeah, so uh, the show MythBusters, you've seen that show, right? Ethan? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they determined in 2012 that Jack could have floated <laughs> with her I love and that survived one. on that single door. But after 25 years of answering the same question, Cameron says, we're all missing the bigger picture here, telling Mythbusters after they did an experiment of their own. I think you guys are missing the point here. The script says Jack dies. He has to die. So maybe we screwed up and the board should have been a little tiny bit smaller, but the dude's going down. <laughs> I can't argue with that. No. There you go. That's hilarious. Uh, next up is The Breakfast Club from 1985. What oh. could this one be? What could this one be? The question is, what did the blonde say? So John Bender is famously crawling through the ceiling crawl space, and he's telling a joke. A naked blonde walks into a bar with a poodle under one arm and a two-foot salami under the other. Oh. The bartender says, I suppose you won't be needing a drink. The blonde says, oh, shit! <laughs> So just a stupid, like what I, I right. like, how can you not like it? Like, so, so it's like, what, what's the joke? Yeah. What's so the like, what did the blonde say? What, what, what did the blonde, what did she say? So what do you think she said? Hmm. Anybody, Any, anybody have anybody? Hmm. Thoughts on that? She had a salami under one arm and a poodle under the other. Is that what I heard? <laughs> Trying to theorize this out. Some sort of dick joke. Yep. A dick joke or it's a blonde joke or a combination of both i'm sure it's combo right it's gotta be yeah i don't know it was it was judd judd nelson yeah <laughs> oh yeah he would get crawling through the thing right yeah yeah i don't know okay awesome. all right so is there theories out there to know. answer it did anybody suggest no answer. Any? that's no, the whole no. point i wonder if well, anybody I mean, has any ideas that's what i said if somebody put a possible answer in that debate like i think it was I know. I wish someone, I mean, there has to be people that have theorized about this. Like maybe we'll have to, you know, put in a, a clip of something of Throughout somebody research. Yeah. There you go. The next one on the, on the list here is from the year 2000. Y2K oh. movie 
is American Psycho. Love the that question movie. is, the question is, Ethan, did he or didn't he? It's a big debate I have with Riker all the time. This is like one of Riker's favorite movies. Like this movie has been reborn through TikTok. Yeah. Like all the young people love and talk about yeah. Patrick Bateman. In fact, Riker was even, I think some of his friends dressed like it for a Halloween party. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, big time coming back. Um, and I think, I mean, that's one of those great, yeah, I don't know. I think it's it's kind of like Donnie Darko too. If you've ever seen that at the end of it, Donnie Darko, there's that big, is he really schizophrenic and crazy? Or was he like a brilliant, some saw, saw the future? Like there's, they leave you with these cliffhangers. And right. I think that just what makes it fun. I think he probably didn't. I think that was all in his head, but I'm teaching psychology now in high school. And so who knows, man, the, the mind is fascinating and weird. So it is. And it's so detailed though. So like, that's my kind of like, I was like, it's very detailed, like really detailed. So I don't know. Like every, you know, every, it's funny. Cause like every time I watch it, I'm like, all right. So wait, so did he like, yeah, did, like, you know, wait, and wait, that's what's going on. With these that's movies? what makes the movie so great though. Right. You're like, it does. Wait, what? Like, yeah. so did I, I think he didn't, I think it was all of a sudden. <laughs> you do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, cause that makes the most like it, it almost like it's, they tell you at the end. Yeah. And it's, yeah, obviously you could think, no, that's not right. But he's psychotic. <laughs> Andy, do you like Huey Lewis? <laughs> yeah yeah i do uh, fantastic I, I, Phil, let me go get the cd you just like stay that. right there you I just like stay that. right there. <laughs> I like the sports album i think the most oh you like sports yeah. i think they're undisputed masterpieces hip to be square no it's but not so Riker, <laughs> i'm just joking Riker has this whole thing where he basically did like and somewhere it might be on tiktok or whatever but he basically did that whole speech but instead of pat you know huey lewis in the news he did this band he loves called tame impala which okay. is like kind of alternative, really cool band, kind of alternative, yeah. but it's just hilarious. It's just like building. I think their best work was, you know, it's just like, holy yeah. crap, kid, you've got a little too much free time on your hands. Where, but, hey, where is Riker right now? Riker! Can you have him do it right now? Or <laughs> No, I think he left to go get a haircut from his grandma. I don't know if he's still in the house or not. I didn't hear him leave, but he's like a ninja right now. Mom's out of town for the weekend, so uh, we're... One of these oh. two, two bachelors oh. living off the land, oh, yeah. living off the land behind me, living in the mountains here and joking. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. All right. Okay. Uh, the last movie I had on the list, Ethan, you and I, I don't know. We might've seen this in the theater. It's okay. uh, maybe, I don't know. It came out in 1994. And this is one that is one of my favorite movies, possibly. I know I've watched okay. it several times with you. The movie is, Pulp Fiction. Mm. Love it. And I think you know where I'm going with this one. Oh. Do you know where I'm going with this one? What's, in the, what's in the briefcase? What's in the box? Oh, yeah. Wrong movie. Wrong Different movie. Okay. I'm but, <laughs> I believe yeah, it's Marcellus <laughs> Wallace's soul. That's what my guess is. That's one of that's one of the theories. That's one of the theories. Now, Andy, do you have a different theory yeah, on deal what? with the devil? His soul? Yeah, oh, that's soul. Deal yeah. with the devil. It was always one of the theories, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> What would make Jules? I mean, Jules is a hardcore hitman. What would make him open the box and go like, or Vincent Vega and go like, whoa? Well, yeah. See, that's yeah. Do, I, I, and what would glow? So, well, now the glowing is could the glowing be just just uh, the symbolic. Yeah, so, yeah, the glowing. Yeah. So basically, one of the things that I I didn't really know. I don't really only heard of uh, Marcellus's soul, right? Yeah. I didn't hear about, or I didn't realize this one. And this was like actually a good theory. Okay. Drugs. Okay. Yeah, that's true. A lot of those guys you know were I mean? like, these yeah. are all kind of like shady gangster dudes. Like yeah. you like open it up. You're like, holy, it's like just filled with cocaine or something like that. You're like, yeah. oh. you know what I mean? And then, and then glowing on there's like, oh my God, that's but, so beautiful. But these guys are like, kind of like gangster hitman. Like they haven't seen drugs before. They haven't seen a big box of Coke or whatever. Like, Maybe it was some fantastic, like high grade heroin or something. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> but I, I would say, yeah, that doesn't seem to add up. It was uh, yeah. a blue methamphetamine. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Sky blue, baby. They're like, oh. Yeah, from New so. Mexico, bro. And then <laughs> one, of, one of the other theories, which uh, someone said was, uh, it, actually, a couple people I saw say this. They're like, it's nothing. And I'm like, it's nothing? It's got to be something. <laughs> I was like, it's nothing? A, it's obviously something. This is something? This is nothing. This is something? This is nothing. <laughs> Sorry, it was an old skip for saying it live. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Andy. It's something. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's gold bars. That's why there's the golden flag. He's got like pure gold bars. I don't know. That's dumb too. Are there any other movies that you can think of that like that are mysterious, kind of like that? I mean, because the yeah. those, are, those are some big ones that are like that. Where what was that? What's the movie? Well, a lot of the movies that are kind of like that, 
are solved at the end, right? Like uh, they have to resolve. They're I see dead people and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. stuff like that. But makes sense. Yeah, but I don't know. I just thought that that was kind of an interesting topic because I was like, oh yeah, these are kind of these are kind of cool. These are kind of fun. Yeah. So I want to. I kind of want to hear uh, more about uh, Ethan's uh, big bachelor night uh, that's going to be happening tonight. <laughs> It's like, and Ethan's uh, he's gonna be taking him to what's that? Uh, that's that place in Varsity Blues that they went to. <laughs> yeah, uh, the Acropolis. <laughs> oh, what? Yeah, we're gonna go see a teacher strip. Is that right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan's like, oh shit, this is really good, actually, this actually, is really weird. weird. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been teaching for so long now, Josh. Dude, it's crazy. Like, I have so many ex students that are now back teaching. That would be doubly awkward like used to be Whoa. a student i'm at that age where i've got the kids of kids i had in class oh, that's like, so you had my mom in class i'm like oh my god that I'm is old. crazy <laughs> yeah that is wild man so all right guys well hey i appreciate you both coming on andy it's good to have you uh, in person here yeah yeah ethan uh, thank you for uh, making some time it's always uh, it's always fun to have the boys on the uh, the show it's always, it's always fun to have the girls on the show too but I mean, come on, let's, let's face it. It's the guys here. It's the guys. Yeah, a, so, we'll have you guys both on, obviously, you know, throughout the year. So, looking forward to that. So, thank absolutely. you. Thanks for including me. Absolutely. All right. For Andy Matlock and Ethan McDonald, I'm Josh. And as always, thank you for being a friend. Thank you for being a friend. <laughs> <laughs>